Okay. Three, two, one. Hello. Wow. 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 What is up? Hey. Welcome to 2023, baby. 2023. We're here. We're here and we're squares and we're and we're back with a new we're episode back. and i'm also Finally. married you're married i was gonna say, i wanted nah. to be the one to say it first nah. Nah. no i was gonna <laughs> i was gonna say tiffany walker has left the show she's oh. no longer here with us we now Man. have tiffany volk with I us i don't even everybody. know what my last name is what i don't even know if i'm cha- what my last name is what the situation is with that like what you're picking at yeah i mean i changed it on my social media but, like, mm-hmm. am I actually going to change it? I don't know. You changed? Yeah. The thing is, I don't want to go through the hassle of, like, getting a new social security card and getting a new do ID. Do have to do that? Yeah. <laughs> is that a thing? Like, I literally Wait. have the paperwork to do it, but I haven't done anything. So what if I just change it on social media and yeah. keep my, my like, biological name? That's a very that's a very Gen Z way to get married. Just I'm like, like, I know I'm Tiffany Volk now, I guess. Yeah. But, like, why do I put it on paperwork? Like, official yeah. documents. That's too much work. <laughs> Benjamin's family's listening right now. They're like, oh, you, you Listen, you, you hate I our love last you name. guys. I literally <laughs> love your last name. But do I love going through all the paperwork? Also, I'm pretty sure it's probably going to cost money. So, like, because the last time I got my ID, I think it was money. Yeah. And, and I'm you're like, unemployed. I'm just, what are you yeah, going to do? Yeah, I'm currently unemployed. <laughs> oh, yeah, I quit my job, too. LOL. I'm not so much has happened. I'm literally, well, also, I worked. Oh, my gosh. Logan. Logan. What? Oh, my gosh. Okay, just realized. What? Okay, do you know how I worked at that one place for a day and I said, oh, I think they might be, like, going downhill? Yeah. I'm not going to say where, but they're temporarily closed. Wait, actually? Yeah, for oh real. Oh, my gosh. So my gut was correct. Dang, you, so, could, yeah. you might have been able to get unemployment if you would have stayed, though. The one day. Well, the thing is, I knew they were going to go down down the track. But yeah. You said maybe. I'm currently finding my way to, <laughs> through life. I, I applied. Well, I'm currently working on applying to, like, an inn so I can live my Laura like Gilmore dreams. Mm-hmm. So all you Gilmore Girls fans will understand. But yeah, I'm like currently four just episodes. jumping around. I'm married. I was in Hawaii. <laughs> quit my job. I'm and, vibing. And that's why you have not heard a new episode uh, from us since uh, Thanksgiving. Oh my gosh. Also, I was in the hospital. What the heck? Oh, you were in the hospital. Yeah, I, I forgot the, that I happened I went to the too. hospital. I had very bad bronchitis. <laughs> I've just been going through it. You had a crazy uh, few Com- months. Like, literally, that wasn't literally. even a whole month. That's from, true. From that now. was like a couple weeks. That wasn't even a, a month weeks. from now yet. Isn't that weird to think? Well, no, no, no. LOL, LOL. Your wedding was about a yeah, my it was a month. was exactly a month ago. Oh, my God. But the thing is, I was still violently ill on the honeymoon. Like, mm-hmm. I swear for the two days, like, You're the, throwing day, up in a volcano. the day before the wedding and the day, uh, like, of the wedding, I was, like, <laughs> on some, like, level of, like, I'm not sick. And then I got on the plane and I was ill. You just started throwing up? No, but the one night I did cough so hard I threw up. So oh that was God. cute and fun and fresh. Maybe you're pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> From coughing so hard? No, it was yeah. just dangerous bronchitis, That's which I it... was afraid was going to turn into pneumonia, but it didn't. But also pneumonia. a joke about pregnancy. <laughs> no, thank you. Not in this household. I love, I love my um, niece. That's about as much baby as I can get. Love you, Jane. Shout out, girl. But yeah, welcome to the Mystery Files. Sorry yes. we've been gone. That's on me. Yeah, that, that's on me. Literally all on me. <laughs> and we were going to, uh, what was it, record the other day, but... I then was, you got sick again. Well, I was just violently tired. So well, Yeah, which is the same Ill. thing as being sick. Yeah. You know, Ill. but we're back. This is why I'm glad we changed. Um, I don't think anyone actually cares when we do like our seasons in like yeah. months or so. But like, that's why I was like, we should just have like the next eight months be like one singular yeah. season. Because I, I think it works. We get to like rest mm-hmm. when we need to rest. And mm-hmm. if you didn't, don't hear from us for a hot minute, you know it's because it's most likely yeah. me. <laughs> well, we, yeah, no, we literally <laughs> like we're brain. ghosts for a while there because yeah. i i released the um because we when we filmed the golem episode the whole point of that was like oh we're gonna like mm-hmm. um post that like in december with the wedding and like everything and they're like we'll be perfect it's yeah. like we've never went missing uh-huh. and then <laughs> and then it was just so funny because it was just like i posted it like mid-december and i was listening to the first 10 minutes and we were talking about thanksgiving <laughs> well yeah <laughs> like, because it's we so literally funny. we're supposed to record another episode mm-hmm. before we left for christmas but yeah <laughs> Is this, That's is, when I got sick. That's yeah. when I was ill. Mm-hmm. Is the case that you picked today the one you were originally going to do way back then, or is this something different? I think this is something different. Oh. I think I have the name of what I was going to do yeah. somewhere in my phone, but this was just chosen because I thought it was very creepy and fun. Okay, I'm praying to God you don't have the case I want to do next week, because I mm. found the case I want to do after you, and I was like, yes, this can be so fun okay. to talk about. I feel like the odds that you have this case are very low. Yeah, it's only happened a couple this times. This is very so. specific, and it's... 
Yeah, I highly doubt you had this case. It's it's gonna be the exact one. I'm gonna get yeah. sad. Can you mm, imagine? Probably not. Probably not. But, but should yeah. we get into it? Let our fans oh get into another mystery here. Yes, pal. All right. Yes, I guess. Give me that drum roll. Oh God, I don't. Do we even remember how to do the drum how roll? Do you drum. <sighs> this week on Z Mystery Files, we present the case of Tales of Okiku. What's that? What is that? Well, there's two different things. I'm not going to spoil the second thing yet, but the first one may sound a little familiar because it's based on the ring. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's not the same thing. Okay. Logan the Master, is it the same thing? No. It's not the same thing, but it might be adjacent. Anyway. Interesting. <laughs> That's okay. all I'm saying. Well, thank God. Okay. Literally, thank God. Okay. Well, let me get into that intro. Now you can look at my computer because I was hiding it before. <laughs> I can see actually how long. How many pages we got today? Uh, it's not too many actually. It's four hundred. No, it's only twenty. <laughs> this is pretty short for me usually. It's 40. Just 20. <laughs> twenty is not bad. You can see all my my things open. Here. You said twenty. <laughs> twenty is not bad for me. Okay, so some horror movies are directly based on true stories, while countless others are inspired by reality but bent the truth to make these stories into something new. The character of Leatherface, for example, was of course inspired by the real-life serial killer Ed Gein, who indeed did wear the skin of his victims, but he never actually picked up a chainsaw and massacred a group of youths. And the ring, Sadaku slash Samara, Believe it or not, too, has a basis in reality. The story of Sadaku slash Samara first introduced in the Koji Suzuki penned novel that became 1998's Ringu and then 2002's The Ring involved three key ingredients, a girl, a well, and a cursed videotape. To make a long story short, Sadaku slash Samara was a young girl with supernatural gifts who was thrown down a well and she returns to our physical reality through the cursed tape. When someone watches it, her ghost crawls out of the watery grave and takes her vengeance out on the person seven days later. The story slightly changed from film to film, but that's the gist. So just how real is Sadaku slash Samara? Okay, so it's the, um, I knew, I knew that it's the ring tale, right? Yeah, so this person is, like the... Okiku is like what? the origin, the origin, like the of actual. The story. Okay, yeah, got yes. it. Okay. So, have I you knew... seen the ring? I assume you have. I have seen the ring. I haven't okay. seen the original though, the original oh, Japanese the, one. The Ringu. Though. Yeah, Ringu. I have not seen the Ringu one. I feel um, like I've Ringu seen the would ring. be so freaky because we know how creepy some of those Japanese like folklore. Movies oh my god, are. no, they're terrifying. Oh my gosh, so, I'm, so we should scary. watch Ringu and we be should. like traumatized. Right after this, we'll watch right it. Right after it. Yeah. Speaking of Don't traumatized, tra- <laughs> listen, mm-hmm. I have to tell you about this nightmare I had the other night. It's really quick, but listen to how chaotic it is. And when I told Nadia this dream, she also had a nightmare. So hopefully I'll give you So one. you're trauma. Okay, yeah. So I want to give you some nightmares too. So the other night I had this mm-hmm. dream, right? Closing Picture this. Eyes. I'm closing my eyes, yeah. I am in the back seat of a car on the driver's side in the back seat. Benjamin's driving the car, right? He's right. like, oh man, I got a pee, so I'm going to stop. And so I go, <laughs> He said oh. it just like that? Yeah, he said, oh, that's exactly how he said it. <laughs> And then, so, he stops at this bar, because it's the closest thing with the bathroom. He right. gets out of the car, and I was like, oh, wait, what should I do? Because I don't want to go in there, but also I'm scared to be out here alone, because what if someone, like, takes me? And he's like, oh, well, just lay down in the back seat. You'll be fine. And so I lay down in the back seat. He gets out of the car, leaves, mm-hmm. yada, yada, yada. And I remember, huh, I remember looking out the window, <laughs> and I see, like, a little, like, street light glimmering through the window, right? Okay, yeah. And I remember, like, laying on the seat, and my, I'm, like, looking through my hair. And as I look through movie. my Yeah, as I look through my hair... I literally see this little blonde boy start flickering up next in the like in the seat beside me. Oh, it was literally so disgusting. He had blonde hair. I was just about to ask if he had blonde hair. Blonde hair, little black Swedish eyes. Swedish boy. And he literally had like a smile that was bloody. And I was like, "Oh dear God, this is the worst thing I can ever picture." And he's like, kind of giggling. I'm like, "Oh, this is awful." He so, might have been eating a strawberry ring pop. You don't know. That might he, not be blood. He was bloody. He, he, he was, he he was, was gooey. Something. He was gooey. He might have got a couple gushers. He had something. Just, <laughs> he was gushing. He was gushing. <laughs> and then, and then, in the front seat. This woman with long stringy hair turns around really quick and like jumps at me. And then in the Where'd dream, she come from? I don't know. <laughs> and then I start screaming in my dream. And then Benjamin wakes me up in real life because I was trying to scream in my sleep and I was making these oh, crazy great. noises. But mm. yeah, that was my nightmare. And I gave Nadia a nightmare when I told her that. So I hope it passes the fun along. I haven't to you. remembered my dreams in months, so I might be okay. Oh my gosh, I hope you have one now. Yeah. Maybe I'll go a little like crazy though and start like seeing it in real life, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just I just I'm full of childlike wonder and imagination. I can just, you know, 
Make mm-hmm. it happen, you know? Or I could just be really concerned. Just like the voices. The voices, they never the voices end. won't stop. <laughs> <laughs> they never quit. <laughs> but yeah, so anyway, now that I went off course a little bit. So how real is this Sadeku slash Samara girl? Maybe as real as your dream. As real. Which was very it, valid. It, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Logan. It was valid. <laughs> so to find out how real this girl is, we travel to Himeji Castle to find out. Located in western Japan, Himeji Castle stands high atop a mountain and is what built somewhere between 1333 and 1346. So oh. elderly. That's some old, old castle sitting up there. Not as old as I thought it would be, though. Really? I thought we were going like uh, like 800 AD or yeah. younger than something that. Whack. Something Something like that. I just like feel that. like I've never heard a casual like 1333. It's always like 1772. Or yeah. Like, uh, and also, like, when I just hear about, like, a lot of, like, Japanese folklore, like, the tales of, like, um, a lot of, like, uh, Asian cultured stories, it's mm-hmm. usually, like, takes place in, like, a 200-something AD or something. Yeah. So, like, the, the, thir- the, thir- the 1300 like, throws is- me off just You're a like, little this bit. this is new. This is so fresh. <laughs> so, yeah, it's somewhere between those dates. And as a home for the Lord of Himeji, the castle, one of the most popular tourist destinations in Japan, is said to be incredibly lucky. Almost supernaturally so, but it has a pretty creepy story attached to it. It's the story of Okiku, who died in a well outside the castle. Oh. So here we go to Miss Okiku. Okay. So Okiku, who worked in a dungeon beneath the castle, was the servant to a samurai named Tezin Oyama. And Oyama took a particular liking to her. In fact, he fell madly in love with her, telling her that he was going to leave his wife and be with her. But Okiku wasn't on board with his plan which led to her apparent murder at the hands of the brutal samurai. Oh, my God. So this is already, like, very cinematic. Yeah. Like, it's Wait, tragic. Do, do we know how old, like, she was? Because, like, it's a young girl in, like, yeah, the I, story. Yeah, I have but no like, idea how old like she was. Is it, like, 13? I assume she's probably, like, 16, 17. That's yeah. just my assumption. It doesn't really say. Yeah. But, like, I have a ima- Like, if you think of the girl from, like, The Ring. Yeah. Maybe around that age. I don't know how yeah. old. Yeah. But it is kind of weird. Because even back then, I don't know how young they married girls off back then. Yeah. Because we know here they were pretty disgusting. We're like, oh, a 12-year-old. Right. Trash. Yeah. No, so exactly. she could very well be young. It's like, damn, in the, like, in the castle basement? In, yeah, like, she's literally living in They're just adding more, like, fuel to the fire. Yeah. Like, let the girl have a break can she literally have a break but that's why it just seems like a movie because it's already it's painting such a deep yeah. picture of who she is what her day-to-day life is and that this guy's in love with her yeah so one of okiku's primary duties was to look after 10 highly valuable golden plates that were owned by ayama and one day the samurai decided to hide one of them so I guess like <laughs> he's just pulling. He's just some like sixteen year old yeah. boy. He's like pulling pranks on it's his like, like you're literally crush. Supposedly, dear like, God, a man. I don't know how old he already has a wife, but like the fact that like she has her only job is to look after these expensive golden plates, and he's just messing with her. Yeah, can you imagine how traumatized you'd be if like your only job is to take care of this expensive stuff and one thing goes missing? I'd be like, well, now I'm gonna die because someone like is gonna think that I, I stole been so it or ready broke to fight. it. Oh, oh my God. Also, is it like golden plates like? plates like, like plates. eating yeah like plates okay valuable not like not like armor plates yeah armor plates. yeah i'm yeah. pretty okay. sure it's like valuable like just nice plate, uh, plates. fine fine china fine china mm. yes mm-hmm. exactly so he decided to hide one of them he told okiku that if she didn't agree to be with him he would blame her for stealing the plate which would lead to her torture and execution in one version of the story okiku ended her own life by throwing herself down the castle as well believing herself to be in a no-win situation and no other way out. So either, like, he would set it up to, like, have her tortured for, like, quote, stealing yeah. this plate, or yeah. the story goes that she took her own life because yeah. there was no other way out. It's either stay alive and suffer or end yeah. it now and not. That's so Which wild. is, like, it's so manipulative, the fact yeah. that he was like, well, if you don't want to be with me... Yeah. Your option is literally dying. Yeah, and the fact that it's, like, it's, like, a castle too and it's, like, a kingdom, she probably, like could not like, yeah like either. how do you There's escape no way. that mm-hmm. yeah no exactly because he would have like went out and like found her like had like the the king come through or some something so yeah that's wild but also i kind of give it up for this girl considering that like 
she's already like yeah. sort of trapped in this place but mm-hmm. she's like okay like the line is i'm literally not going to be with this man yeah that's so stinking creepy so the fact that like she found she was trying to find her own way out of this without being with him yeah she was no, like exactly. i don't care if i live here i'm not going to be with you i'd yeah. rather literally die than be yeah here. screw that that screw like, that guy yeah, yeah you go girl yeah. i mean i'm really sad there's a lot situation. of people i feel that way about <laughs> <laughs> that you'd throw yourself down a well yeah <laughs> got it got it got it got it cool <laughs> check so, in the other version, <laughs> I, I can't okay. process. I can't process. I'm trying to think said. about what I just. Yeah, I'm like, what does that really mean for you? <laughs> you know, the no, like the whole thing about like the person's like, I want to be with you. Is like, I'd rather fall down the well. I'd rather, I'd rather fall down a well than be with you. I'd rather sell my soul to Satan than be with you. At least Satan has a job. At least Satan works in the community. Oh, oh. Have you not seen that clip? Oh, I thought this was a dig on me. <laughs> no, no, no. For not currently being employed. I'm like, wow. No, At least no, no. Satan I mean, has a job. No. <laughs> am, I, am I worse than Satan? Am I not an active member of society? Apparently <laughs> Satan is better than I am. Did you buy something today? Yeah, I did. Okay, then you're an active member of society. See, I start... I yeah. money saved. I'm a saver. Yeah. And then I spent it. And all of it. And then you No, got... not all of it. I'm yeah. well off. Well enough off. Will you that... give me five dollars? No. Well why? You're well off too. You're no. well enough off that you don't need my money. My money is until I get rent money again. Well. Someone hire me. I'm a great I'm a great asset. I'm actually I'm I'm no Satan. You know, this is my job interview. I'm not Satan, so you should yeah. hire me. Where there. can they where can they find you to hire you? Uh find me at Tiffany Walker. Wait, no. <laughs> at tiffany volk official on instagram wow that was so f- wow wow i yeah. set myself up for that one so yeah you'll move find statewide me there. find me there i can yeah. we can talk then i'll give you my phone number if you're real from what our uh, our rap statistics said we have like five listeners from like scotland so maybe hey, you can get a job in scotland if you have remote work more. available i'm also interested just let me know i'm, I'm a really <laughs> great worker i have a good sense of humor and i have a dark sense of humor so yeah. please let me know this whole show is like your interview yeah there's nothing to hide <laughs> every time i interview for a job <laughs> oh, and they no. ask me about the podcast i'm like please don't listen to that episode oh. please don't listen to that episode. <laughs> I went to this I coffee just, shop and I was afraid because I said, oh, I'm recording my podcast later. And they didn't ask what the podcast was. Aww. And I was like, oh, that's a bummer. You're like, Which dang. Nice, they probably hear a lot of people in They're coffee like, shops mention right. their podcast. They're like, okay. Like, and then I felt embarrassed. Podcast. I was like, it's not one of those podcasts. It's yeah, not. No, right? It's that's how I feel. One. That's how I feel. But yeah, I wouldn't throw myself down a well for a man. I know that. Anyway. I would. <laughs> you would? Yeah. Well, the story doesn't end there. <laughs> In the wake of Okiku's death, she was said to crawl out of the well and appear to... Ah! <laughs> what you do? Sorry. Oh my gosh, is someone calling for an interview? Probably not. Um, in the wake of Okiku's death, she was said to crawl out of the well and appear to Ayoma on a nightly basis. So, like, whatever so, decrepit figure of her... I imagine her crawling up the well and sneaking into his bedroom and visiting him. That's kind of a sleigh, though, like... Like killing yourself because you didn't want to be with a man. Then now torture. you get to torture him. Yeah, it's like thank forever. God. That's kind of a sleigh. Good, good for her. Good for her. So apparently, Mr. Ayoma was apparently driven insane by this vengeful ghost's incessant screams in the oh, night. Oh, the way he probably said women were insane before. Uh, yeah, I'm huh? like, huh, huh. Oh, you seeing ghosts at night? Oh, you see ghosts at you night? You see a woman at night? Good for you. Yeah, you're insane. So you're I guess more she lucky was... than both of. <laughs> Repeat? Say it a little louder. You're, you're, l- you're, l- you're lucky for than most people. <laughs> to see women at night. <laughs> Seeing a dead woman at night creeping in your room. She was also regularly heard counting the plates in the dungeon. So you can imagine just hearing the echo of a counting in the background. Why would you need to keep out counting? There's eight of them. <laughs> There's only eight now. Wasn't there nine before? No, there was nine and one was missing. A tenth plate was oh. missing. So she literally would count to nine. Oh, wow. But it's probably because like when you're... Sometimes people say when you're a ghost, like there's like a obsession thing. Obsession, or... but also what's the word I'm thinking of? There's like a certain pattern that you get into of like something you did when you were alive. It's mm-hmm. almost like it just keeps repeating and repeating. Yeah, and repeating. yeah, like yeah. You're stuck in that motion. Like you're stuck in that like time loop or yeah. whatever. Yeah. So was. like yeah. she would be stuck there because her entire life was to take care of these fancy plates. So he would hear her counting and counting, oh. and it kind of like drove him insane. So. um... 
she would she's like lame. throw these violent fits whenever she realized as she always did that the 10th plate was missing so like she would freak mm. out like her ghost would freak out in the basement and um drawings of okiku depict her as looking very similar to the sadeku slash sam samara that we see in the Which movies is, oh, yep. with it's, the flowing black hair mm-hmm. and a long white dress this is the general depiction of a person who has died under unnatural circumstances in japan these ghosts are referred to as the yure, translating to either faint soul or dim spirit. These tragic women are buried in white dresses with their hair let down. I did not know that. That's no. actually really And I hope I said that right. Also, if I'm saying any of these words incorrectly, I, I apologize. I'm trying, but I apologize if I'm being insensitive by saying it incorrectly. You're but kidding. I do love that um, these ghosts like can translate to the words like faint soul or dim spirit. Like dim yeah. spirit, that's so beautiful. Sad, no, yeah, but really no. beautiful. No, yeah, I, I, that's so interesting. I didn't know that thing about the dresses. That's yeah. so interesting. Maybe I think it it's, makes sense why a lot of the people, like you see in movies and stuff, yeah. look like that. I just feel like not a lot of people know that, like from watching the no. movies, though. They oh just gosh. know the story of like the like the girl or whatever. That's mm-hmm. just so wild. But like, it's something wow. that's portrayed so popularly. Like you don't like yeah. you know it's such like a it actually has thing. historical impact. Yeah, but it's so in pop culture you don't even think about mm-hmm. it. That's you just crazy. Think, oh, it's just overdone. Well, it's not overdone because yeah, it's the thing they did. Like it wasn't a choice for the film. It's like uh, there was an actual reason why they dressed her up like that. Yeah, like wow. it's refreshing to know they're being historically accurate. That's so interesting. So the well, locally known as Okiku's Well, can still be found outside Himeji Castle, but is now known and has wrought iron bars covering it. So an effort Dang. to keep Okiku locked inside, perhaps. <laughs> so some people think, like, obviously, they're yeah, trying to keep, keep the, the spirit, spirit in. locked in. Mm. But you can go still visit. go and visit this, which I kind of want to. Benjamin's uh, cousin is currently in Japan. She's visiting. So I'm like, hey, so girl, going. you want to go to Okiku's well and tell me if like it looks scary or something? I want to go to Tokyo. I don't think it's it's probably not close to Tokyo at yeah, all. But I have no idea where. We could do one of those trains. That's usually what people do. They take the train well, through uh, Japan to like go to well, everywhere. I'd be so scared. Cause what if we're at night and you ever seen like the night train? Like a. Uh, in, was it in Japan? Wait, wasn't Watcher episode talking about the night train, the death train or something? I, where, maybe. Where, like, it's you keep riding minute. and riding and riding and then, like, you're dead. That'd be fun. I don't want to die in a fun. train. You don't? No. I really don't want to die. Where do you want to die, Tiffany? Huh? I don't want to die. <laughs> I in love In a castle? Living. In a well? In a well. <laughs> On my own regard. We can make it happen after the show. You just let me know. Were you ever scared of wells when you were little? No. A well? <laughs> ah, get it. Get it. It's well, just like it's just like a um this is such a side thing. And everything <laughs> comes back to this. It just reminds me of the Goosebumps episode, The Night of the Living Dummy, the revenge one where they drown him. In the well. He's yeah, the well. They, they they when they throw Slappy down the well. I forgot they threw Slappy down a well. They threw Slappy down the well. Ooh. They put little Slappy down the well. Little Slappy fell down the well. <laughs> It reminds me of this um, little graphic novel called Anya's Ghost, and this girl falls in a well, and there's a ghost in the well. But she's not a ghost. There's just a ghost in there. Yeah. Oh. There's just a ghost in the she well. She get out? And the, the girl? Yeah. I or did she become so. a ghost? No, I think she got out, because then, like, the ghost follows her to school, and people are like, why are you telling yourself that? <laughs> Wow, you must be an insane woman, huh? You You're must be crazy. You're talking to yourself. That's wow. embarrassing. <laughs> so this horrifying tale of Okiku doesn't stand alone. There's actually one of the creepiest haunted doll stories to date. <sighs> that is the story of a haunted doll that is also named Okiku. So okay. when I was looking into the stuff with the well, I also found this really creepy doll. And I was like, I am obsessed with this. Was yeah. this what your story was? No, it's not. Why do you no. keep smiling right now? No, I'm now? thinking like, about my, my man. Oh, oh, Robert. Sorry, Robert. Sorry. I'll say it, Robert. Hey, Robert. No, stop. Say sorry. No. I think it's only if we, like, take a video of him. No, you have to or say Or was it sorry. when you say his name? No, because we're going to leave here. I'm going to break Oh, my, my gosh. Leg. Do you know what I watched? I watched, was it The Boogeyman? Or was it The Boogeyman? No. The what? The movie. I Disney Channel? Up. No. Why would oh. The Boogeyman be on Disney Channel? The Monsters Under the Bed one. Maybe it's not The Boogeyman. What am I? I spelled boogie wrong. Is that Boogie Nights, man. What's the the guy you say his name in the mirror? Who am I thinking of? Bloody Mary? No, there's another one. I, maybe it is the Boogeyman. Candyman? Candyman! Oh, yeah, Candyman's good. I watched that newer movie, and it, it did freak me out. It's really good. It's a reboot, also. Do oh, you know that? okay. I think I did vaguely know that. They, but... There's a 1980s version, I think, and mm. the, I think the original Boogeyman from the 80s version is in... 
the that version. He plays a different character. Mm, okay. I think he cameos at least. Okay. Yeah. No, Boogeyman's good. Yeah, I did watch that, and then I not watched, Boogeyman, Candyman. Um, Candyman. Oh my god, you got I watched me Candyman. Boogeyman. I also watched um, what's the one you were trying to get? Bodies, bodies, bodies. Yeah, I you watched, did. Yeah, I watched that on the plane. I also watched Nope on the plane. Oh, so, T. Ooh, okay. I watched them both on a plane. Oh my god! There's some stuff I was like, I don't feel all right. Watching you were on the plane. way to Hawaii and you watched all those. Oh my god! I had all, I had lots of hours, ten to twelve. You hours. had lots of time. I had time on my hands, <laughs> and I watched the scary movies. So I was like, I'm not going to bed now. Yeah, I mean, but you yeah. can't. You're in a plane. I'm in a plane. But yeah. yeah, anywho, back to Okiku and the haunted scary doll. It's not <laughs> Robert the doll. Sorry, Robert. Thank you. So, in 1918, a young man purchased the doll that would later on claim the name of Okiku as her own for his two-year-old sister, and the legend would kickstart a tourism flash. So, Japan during this era was still stuck in the ways of feudalism. While the world around her was embracing the progress of technology and science, Japan was holding tight to her beliefs and to her rich mythology and fables. This was a land and still is by all accounts where demons, ghosts, vampires, and other creatures roamed free. A land where goblins and evil spirits were constantly harassing normal folks. On February 3rd, you drove evil spirits away by going to shrines and through rituals and folklore practices. Oh. Setsuba and events. Lake monsters gobbled kids up. Woods Work. like... <laughs> work. <laughs> Woods like Okikigara, northwest of Mount Fuji, drove people insane and compelled them to commit suicide. Foxes were scared and devoted animals. So all this different stuff is like building the lore of how like mm -hmm. crazy the times were here. Yeah. So Japanese culture was and still is fraught with legends and the supernatural boogeyman. And dolls, some of them, were powerful instruments of magic. You don't mess with dolls. You don't mess with you dolls. You don't mess with dolls. So, the doll was bought in Sapporo by a 17-year-old Akichi Suzuki in 1918 for his two-year-old sister, Okiku. He was touring the region for a maritime exhibition, and the doll instantly drew his eyes. Wh okay, oh. <laughs> like, his eyes were drawn to the doll. You I was thought, like, what like, does oh that mean? Oh my gosh, it drew its eyes? <laughs> yeah. No. The, I thought he, I was just already, was, like, sketching. No. <laughs> like, I'd be so horrified. If I saw you walk into drawing. a toy store and there's just a doll. No, 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 no. Wait, wait. wait. It's like one of those tourist Stop. boardwalk things. The caricatures. Oh my gosh, the caricatures, but it's just an evil doll. <laughs> it's like, this is what you look like. It's like the fattest head you've ever seen. It's just his eyes drawn black. There's blood in them. It's like, here you go. It starts talking backwards. <gasps> and it hands you, like, your picture. I cry. It's just black scribbles. I start crying. Wait, oh do you God. follow, um, there's this girl. She is the daughter of, like, the person who made the Chucky doll. She's on TikTok, and she's really, really cool. Oh, But no. she made, like, a short film about, like, I think it's about the Chucky dolls. I don't remember. Mm. But she, like, has all of them in her possession because her dad did, like, all the special effects and all that kind of stuff. But she has these dolls. And I guess there are people telling her on TikTok, like, oh, you should dress up Chucky as, like, Elf on the Shelf. <laughs> and so she did, like, a photo shoot, like, normal ones of him on Elf on the Shelf. And then she drew, like, a pentagram in the middle of her floor and, like, That's put so him funny. in, like, an Elf on the That's Shelf That's so costume. good. It was amazing. I would do the same thing if I had one of the OG Chucky dolls. Yeah, so that she was casually would. doing that. So I'm like, mm, that doll would draw my eyes too. But not <laughs> this one. Not this doll. That's so freaking cool. So this perfect little thing sat on a shop window enticing him. Suzuki didn't think twice. He went in and instantly purchased the figurine for his sister. Used the last of his money for it for her. Dang. So at about You can 40... relate, huh? <laughs> <laughs> the last of my money. <laughs> I'm I'm doing well. I'm doing well enough. You really just hate poor people, huh? I do. I'm no, telling I'm telling Satan. Satan? Who said like good? What? <laughs> Satan says check. It's what I wanted for you all along. He's, that's, not, that's not the only thing he's got checked for me <laughs> anymore. No, anymore. You're on the list. So about, at about 40 centimeters tall and dressed in a traditional kimono, the doll was exquisite. Its hair was raven black and cut Ooh. to roughly shoulder length in a traditional akapa hairstyle. Her eyes were piercing coals that seemed to swallow everything up in their gaze. The thing was mesmerizing and enchanting, something that could really take your breath away. Suzuki went back home and gave the doll to his little sister. The tyke fell in love with the doll immediately. It transformed into Okiku's favorite toy and, more importantly, her best friend. 
So we already know this is going to go in a bad direction when kids start thinking their toys are their best friend. Mm -hmm. As we know from Goosebumps. Yeah. As we know Goosebumps. from... Arl Stein Arl wrote Stein. the Bible to why that is Bible. a bad idea. Even what was the other, the perfect doll one? It wasn't... From Goosebumps. It was the one that we watched The together. Haunting Hour. The Haunting it's Hour. It's like the first episode. Remember we yeah. accidentally watched that in Spanish? <laughs> <laughs> of like the perfect the doll one. That's what this is reminding that. me of. Like oh, this God. is my best friend. <laughs> Have you seen the trailer for Megan? The other oh, doll movie it, that's coming it out? It looks so stupid. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I think I live for her. I'm, no. I'm excited. <laughs> it's driving me nuts. It keeps coming on. And I'm like, this looks so bad. Do they have to make her look that bad, though? Yeah, I mean, maybe that's a part of it, though. It's supposed to look like that jarringly bad. Like, the thing is, it looks like that looks like Black Mirror if it were, like, really, really bad. Mm. Like, yeah, I miss upsetting. Black Mirror. It looks Dang. bad, though. I'm supposed to see it though, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Good luck. Tell me how. <laughs> tell me how bad it is. I'll tell you how great it is. Mm, wrong. <laughs> so obviously becomes her best friend. Wrong. Should not be her best friend. Uh, Okiko Okiku played every day with the doll, took it everywhere, and treated the figurine like a little sister. Oh. Gross. She would talk and prattle with the thing, feed it, sleep with it. She decided to call the doll Okiku, so a mirror duplicate of herself disgusting so we already know this very much sounds like goosebumps so you can see yeah. where they probably got the inspiration oh yeah um the doll never left okiku's sight then a year later tragedy struck in 1919 okiku died yellow fever had descended on the land and rubbed the family of the little girl and she had passed okiku died gasping for air in pain and afraid the doll was held firmly in her grasp she was only three oh, years old. No. The family wanted to bury the doll along with Okiku, but circumstances and the governmental oversight prevented the last act of kindness on their part. The doll was never laid to rest with Okiku. That's so weird so, why they wouldn't let her just, like, keep it. There might have been some, like, rules back then, like, especially, like, in Japan about what kind of stuff you could put. In the ground, in yeah. In the ground, or just, like... They had very specific rules, so I feel like something like that they would not have allowed. And it said go governmental oversight, yeah. so whatever that meant. And if a lot of people passed at this time, too, I bet it was, like, harder in, like, graves and stuff. That's, yeah. That would, mm, that would make sense, but that's... Ooh. So, yeah, she, like, tragically died, and oh. as you can imagine, her, like, giving so much of herself and projecting so much of herself onto this doll, I feel like I know where that's going even all more. Of, yeah, giving, giving all, all the energy, her energy mm. to this doll, literally naming it after herself so it could be a reflection of her... And the doll not being laid to rest with her is probably going to stir the pot a little. Yeah. 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 Stir the pot. So. Little girl got up and said, tag, you're it. She said, tag. <laughs> that sounds like a movie. Is that a movie? Tag, you're it. Or just tag. I feel like there's got to be at least there's one. There's got to be a really bad movie called Tag. <laughs> so now we move on to the section that we just call the shrine. So let's get into whatever that means. <laughs> so, like you don't know. No, I do. I do. <laughs> So Okiku, this time it's the doll, not the child, okay. was alternatively located in the family's altar, a common practice in certain Japanese households to commemorate the dead. So mm. as we, we've seen that in um, Mulan, yeah. they have the whole little Yeah, section. they have the whole, like, like, the actual shrine where they have, like, something yeah. significant. Okay, all yeah. All the stuff for their family. So picture that. The small shrine celebrated their daughter and marked her passing into the afterlife. That's when the weirdness started to occur. One day, the family started to notice that the doll's hair was getting longer. Huh? Mm, I would throw uh, up. I would throw up with the doll's hair. Go, Look! Who's, lay who's laying this girl's hair? Who, who, who's why, laying it why down? Why is your hair doing that? Oh, So my God. once a traditional shoulder length cut with neat ends, now was a mangled mess of split ends reaching down past Me. her waist. <laughs> Me. Past your waist? Me. The fact that it grew that far from your shoulders to your waist on a doll. Can you imagine if you could see that yeah. happening in real time? Like, you kept a camera on, you could, like, just Ew. watch as the hair got longer. I'd be so disturbed. I'd throw up a little bit. So, apparently, it was scruffy, different colors, and it just felt, like, actually felt different than, like, what the doll Like, hair. human hair? Yeah. No. And at night, they started to dream of Okiku, and sometimes the doll would appear by their side come morning. So, it would be from the altar and then come into their room. No, 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 no. After they had dreamt of the doll, it literally appeared in their room. It's 40 centimeters tall, right? Um, and that's like, that's what it said. It said 40 centimeters, I think. Yeah. That's, I don't know how much that is. Big like, enough that really. I don't want that thing Big in Big enough room. that if it's walking in my room, I'm if, if telling no me it doll, threw up. No doll, I, mama threw up. <laughs> no, that's too much for me. <laughs> so the chilling events intensified and grew into full-blown acts of spiritual infestation. Lights flickering on and off, banging in the house, noises and strange voices. The closer the year, 
got to a certain key date, like Okiku's birthday and the day of her death, like this is when it really started to amp up. Mm -hmm. So that's just concerning (laughs) for obvious reasons. First off, that like your house is literally getting like exercise, not exercise, what's it called? Exercise. Possessed. Possessed, yeah. Possessed. Yeah. Your house is getting possessed and it's amping up on Okiku's birthday and death date. No. Yeah, so like her spirit's like for sure inside of that doll. Got it. Yeah, got it, got it, got it. Mm -hmm. Or like a demon is now taking over that doll's body because. That ain't your daughter no more. We're emulating it, yeah. Oh, uh-huh. So over time, they were certain and the town shamans slash spiritual leaders concurred that their daughter's soul was in fact trapped within the doll. So they think- I should be one of those, spiritual leader. Yeah, you said that's a daughter's soul. Yeah, The I'm thing so is, smart. I don't know how much I trust that it's a daughter's soul, because why would a daughter want to freak out her family? Unless she was you, because- <laughs> I can imagine you pulling something like that. Like, they're going to think this is so funny. Oh, yeah. If I die, I'm coming back and pulling pranks on all of you. I'm going to make you think you're possessed. Ha ha. It'll be fine. I possess you. (laughs) Just, I don't, wait, actually, I don't know if a human, uh, wait, we've gone over this. Human souls can't possess, can they? Only, like, demonic souls. Yeah, but, like, it depends on, like, how the human soul, like, gets twisted into, like, like, a human can become a demon. Like, a human soul can become a demon depending on, like, tragedy and trauma and... Well, I don't want to be a demon, but I do want to take over your body and play a little game, you know? Yeah. Like, I want to be, like, a little Beetlejuice type. Yeah. This is like a slight competition between yeah. both of us. It's like, not if I die first. Yeah, not if I die first. Come, Mr. Tallyman. Let me go down. Isn't that the dinner scene? Yes. Oh, yeah. Beetlejuice. Yes, yeah, good job. Banana. Yeah. You knew the movie. Congrats. I, I, and good job. You knew the movie, <laughs> stupid. So in 1938, the family... I can't handle this. I've had two cups of coffee today. <laughs> Isn't that nuts? I've had two cups of coffee. This is why I'm able to do the podcast today. This episode I made so you drink crazy. so much coffee so I can be good for you. Because I, I couldn't I couldn't be good for you the other day. <laughs> and today I said, I'm going to wake up. I'm going to be up tonight. And now I'm telling ghost stories and we're losing our minds. <laughs> this is what happens when we're not together. Like filming that show for so we long. Just can't this is what happens. It. In 1938... <laughs> Yeah. Let me take a sip of my coffee. I need to get reamped. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The shy takeover. <clears throat> In 1938. Can you read? <laughs> <laughs> I convinced you you can't read. Logan, I didn't know you could read. Since when? Guys. Guys. Mommy, look. Mama, look. I wrote I my need alphabet. To read. <laughs> IBC. IBC. IBC D. IBC D. In 1938, the family. <laughs> Uh, okay. Do you notice how I'm trying to do good? Yeah, no, Hire I'll, me. I'll behave. I'll Hire behave. me. Yeah. In 1938, the family relocated to a different district. They had by now become accustomed to Okiku and had even grown fond of their daughter's restless spirit. So they're Weird. just, they're just okay. adjusting. They said, nah, we, we kind of like the spirit. She's throwing mugs at, like, the wall break and like, stuff. She, and she's like, oh, Kiku. So, oh, Kiku, you're so cute. Oh, my God. Oh, Kiku. Oh, did Are you, you hungry? Did you scratch Mommy again with those three Aww. claws? You're adorable. Oh, is that the mark of the beast on my shoulder? Oh, Kiku. <laughs> oh, Kiku. Stop making your father look like he's having seizures. Oh, His Kiku. eyes keep going white and black at night. <laughs> Oh, Kiku, oh, stop Kiku. growling. Stop watching the travel channel at 2 a.m. Oh, Kiku. Go to bed. Stop tapping three times and smelling like rotten meat at 3 a.m. <laughs> Quit it with the witching hour, oh, Kiku. Get out of our room. Stop blinking, oh, Kiku. <laughs> they just throw up. So they became accustomed and fond to the daughter's restless spirit. I don't know why, because they're dumb. Got it. To them, it was a magical and a unique opportunity to interact with the dead. But the, I don't know. I just don't know. I feel like maybe... I just feel like trusting it to your daughter is like just a little... Mm-hmm. Also, I feel like maybe back then they weren't... Maybe they didn't think things were as creepy. But now I feel like we have too much understanding... Yeah. Of like dark entities that like we would understand that's creepy. But to we them... too much like, horror content too. Yeah. Like maybe to them yeah. they're like, oh, that really is my daughter. Yeah, right. And also just like the fact like in Japan too, like a lot of like the spirits, like they believe in a lot of different spirits and that they're with them like yeah. throughout like everywhere. So yeah. like it To them make it sense. actually is like a hopeful thing. Yeah. I think to me it could be, like, I just I don't trust anything. Yeah, no. So if that happened me, here, I'd leave. Yeah, I'd literally I'd, I'd literally out. move out of the state. Full stop. So 
I understand why they could think it was like a magical and beautiful thing, but mm-hmm. I'd be horrified. Yeah, great for your family, not for me though. Never for me. <laughs> so not desiring to take Okiku with them, fearing that they w- had what fueled her magic was the proximity to their daughter's grave. So they didn't want to move the doll because they thought the magic was because it was so close to the grave. And if they mm. moved the doll, it would no longer have her. Oh, like, her spirit inside yeah, of it. Yeah, like they didn't think it would no like be magical anymore. Got it. So the family approached the local temple and asked them to take care of the doll. The temple by now had heard countless stories of the amazing doll, the haunted doll, whose hair grew every year. They were fascinated, skipping like school go- girls with the prospect. <laughs> school girls. School girls. So they just thought it was so cool and that they were overwhelmed by the idea like this doll could actually be haunted. So the priests gleefully accepted the charge and started taking care of Okiku. Over time, they've managed to confirm the veracity veracity of some of the claims. Particularly, the hair does indeed grow. The priests have sent out cut samples of the hair for scientific analysis. Scientific examination of Okiku proved that the hair was that of a human child. That's insane. That's crazy. Ew, 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 Mm ew. Okay. Mm -mm. I mean, I know, Mm -mm. like, I understood how creepy it was that the hair was growing. Yeah. But the fact that, like, it was taken for scientific examination and it actually was human hair. And it was, yeah, that's wild. That's not right. No. So I guess regularly the hair gets a trim and the doll stays happy and content. <laughs> they take an Okiku to the super cut. They said, let's cut your hair. It's they like taking her to the salon. Taking her to the salon. <laughs> She's going to get a balayage next. <laughs> She's going to get a bob. <laughs> She's going to get a bob. She already had a bob. As the years passed on, the doll's fame grew and her powers further developed. She's bolder now, invading the dreams of the priest and those that come to visit her. She's stronger, her hair growing faster and wilder. And she's even spookier. The latest, the latest event uh, driving tourists mad is the frightening claim is that oh, is that the mouth of Okiku is slowly opening. <gasps> and if you dare to peer inside, you may be able to. Oh, oh. no. Oh, no. I already know oh. this is going. No, say it. <laughs> say it. <laughs> say okay. it. It's slowly opening and that if you dare to peer inside, you may be able to glimpse something like baby teeth. No. Spouting like weeds no. from porcelain gums. No. That makes me... Ew. Like it's sprouting out yeah. of the port. Like, have you ever seen like a baby's mouth and they're like, yeah. keek, 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 little oh, teeth jabbing out? My God. That makes me sick. I, I, I like look at her and I'm like, oh my God, your teeth you, are really straight. You like put your finger in to see and she bites Aww. you. Well, I bet it's behind the glass and stuff, right? Like it has but to like, be. <laughs> There's no way they're can, letting people touch her hair. Where do you, do you want to know how you visit Okiku? <laughs> I, I can, tell, I can tell you where to yeah. visit Okiku. So Okiku is located in her private shrine, so it is oh, more of a private work. thing, so we can't just like stick our finger in her mouth and see if oh, she bites darn. us. So it's on display in a little wooden box in the Mananji Temple in the town of Iwakazima, Hokkaido, Japan. Ooh. She's there. Oh, Hokkaido. I heard a song about Hokkaido. All around Hokkaido. That was a choir song a long time ago. But she's there waiting for all who want to play with fire and have a one-on-one conversation with the paranormal and the bizarre. So if you want to go visit her, see what she does, figure it out. Test it yourself. We've got to go there too. Yeah. I'm more, I think I'm more afraid of her than I am of Robert the doll. She's growing hair and teeth. Yeah. I mean, honestly. That's creepy. Yeah. Robert has like a lot of stuff going on with him, but uh, she's, she's got she. I hair. I don't think they've ever gone that far. That like her hair grows and she has like little teeth inside. Uh, that just oh my that's god, that's disgusting. That's crazy. What are they? What are? What would they do if like she becomes a human? Like what if that's what this is? Like I she's slowly know. becoming more human I by the day. Don't know. If she becomes human, I and don't then she trust walks anything. amongst us. Uh-huh. Like what if one day she just like her? She just the porcelain fully becomes just skin. And she just. Breaks out I of her mean, case and who's comes to out. say that there's not already a child walking around that is from doll? You know? Yeah, like you. Like me. Yeah. It's giving me. Do you remind me of? Oh, do you, do you remind me? Have you ever heard of um, the Odd Life of Timothy Green? No, what's that? Where he grew from like a box that these people made in their backyard or something? No. I can't remember the specifics, but like they wanted a kid because they couldn't have kids on their own. And somehow they put, like, everything they wanted from, like, a child in their box in their backyard. And this little kid, like, sprouted up in their backyard and had, like, little Oh, ew. No, is it a horror thing? No, or is it it's cute? literally cute. That sounds terrifying. I'm looking up the premises cause I, premise because I can't... Well, if it's not a horror movie, I'm making it a horror movie. No, I, that it sounds... could be a good horror movie. I'm going to give you the actual 
synopsis thing because it's right. hard to explain. It's really cute though. Oh, I've seen that poster before. It has before. Jennifer Gardner and Joel Edgerton. This looks like a very you movie. You it's, watched this in 2007 for no, sure. I literally did. Okay. After receiving bad news from a fertility doctor, Cindy and Jim Green try to bury their dreams of having a child by writing out all the great traits. I, I nailed this. I, I don't know why I was nervous. By writing out all the great traits that their child would have by putting them in a box in the garden. During a freak storm in the middle of the night, they awake to find a boy named Timothy with leaves growing from his ankles. I just want to say, Weird. considering I haven't seen this movie in many, it came out to the You unlocked a core memory inside of yourself. But why did I literally nail the synopsis just guessing my memory? I just want to say, yeah, good movie, but it's giving that kind of vibe. A child literally grows in your backyard. You can remember this niche movie and the whole storyline, but you were making sure Deo was from Beetlejuice. <laughs> So I funny. can't say I'm correct in a lot of things I do, <laughs> but yeah. You are on the money for the most part, though. I wasn't. I was on the money, but yeah. This is a shorter <laughs> case this week. We wanted no. to like sneak our way back in. I mean, we're still at the 44 minute mark. We're so. still thriving. But yeah. what are your thoughts? Which one did you like more? Which one do you think is more realistic? Oh. Do you believe them both? What's the situation? Um. I like to believe both. I think the the um, Okiku doll is really cool, but I do like the origin story of Okiku just, like, period. I think it's just, like, yeah. really cool. And, like, just knowing that it's, like, based off of, like, something in history, especially, like, from the 1300s, is, like, just very yeah. interesting to me. I just feel like I'm going to look at, like, the horror character of, like, what people only call, like, quote-unquote, just the girl from the ring. And, yeah. like... Like, it's more than that. I know people, more now. People yeah. assume that... The ring was just like its own thing. It was like yeah. Americanized. Well, a lot of well, a lot America. of people think it is like just an American like monster, and it's not. Uh, yeah, like... and like it, there was a movie prior called Ringu, and then all of this yeah. lore that was prior to that. Yeah. Even. So like. Yeah. No. It's very there's um. There. This is this is such a weird side thing, but th- it happened pretty recently. There um, on the show Dragula, the mm-hmm. the horror drag competition yeah. that I watch. Um, one of the contestants, uh, Hoso Teratoma which is a great name, mm. um, did uh, the Okiku, like, really? from the original, like, Ringu, like, movie. Oh, my movie. gosh, wow. Because she was like, oh, yeah, like, I'm doing, like, um, uh, one of, like, the like Okiku from the Ring movies and stuff, mm-hmm. and they were like, not the Americanized version, the Good. one from... Uh, Ringu. Fr- the one Ringu. And I just thought, like, that was, like, wow. really cool, because it was just, like, so creepy what she did with it. It was, oh, like... Not, you'll have to show me a picture it was after. It was wild, um, which I just think is, like, kind of cool that, like, you know... Um, taking back, like, what we've Americanized and stuff. And now I, like, know more about it. Because even when I watched that, I didn't fully, like, know there was that much background story um, behind that. So that's, like, pretty cool, actually. So I really like the first one a lot. The doll thing is still (laughs) wild to me. We're going to need to put place money on Ukiku in a... (laughs) <laughs> Robert, like, fighting out. I, oh my my money's on Ukiku, honestly. Sorry, Robert. Sorry, Robert. LOL. He's mad. He, like, punches through this window right now. <laughs> he spites you. He spites me. But, he, yeah. He's listening to this episode just crying. Which one would you visit more? Would you go to visit the doll or would you go to visit the well? The doll. Because yeah. I feel like with it being the temple, it would be, like, kind of fun. Yeah. Like, it'd be, like, pretty and stuff. And then I'd be like, oh, there's a haunted doll with baby teeth. You That's tea. so cool. Oh. <laughs> hmm. I would just, like, trim a piece of its hair and just see that. You know? <laughs> they should put the doll in on <laughs> Epcot. Epcot. <laughs> put Why it, in, put Epcot? it in, in Japan. Oh, the countries put it I in understand. there. <laughs> At first, little children everywhere go to see this doll. I don't know if when you were little, did you ever have one of those like plastic doll heads that like is like its shoulders were on the table and then up from that was like, like a really for big makeup? head. Yeah, you would do like fake makeup no. or you could like. I cut its hair. I don't think you were supposed to, but you could, no. like, style its hair. You cut its hair? <laughs> I mean, I cut all my doll's hair. Yeah. So, they looked bad. But I've I seen them, but I didn't have it. But, yeah, I had those. But I'm imagining this doll being that. So, me, like, cutting its hair, but it growing back immediately. They're like, oh, stop. stop. What is your issue? Or, oh, my gosh. Or, like, the Baby Alive dolls. Did you ever see a Baby Alive doll? Yeah. And it, like, peed and stuff. Oh, my baby God. Alive, baby Alive, <laughs> baby for real. But it's this doll. That's how they find out it's coming to life. They just yeah. smell urine. They, they like walk in and they go, what is that it's smell? <laughs> Mom. God. Now they're always peeing. But oh yeah. My God. I think the scarier one is definitely the doll. I mean, the lore of Okiku definitely is so freaky. Yeah. But like there's something about the doll that like uh, mm. sends me. I just don't like that the hair and the teeth are growing. Yeah. Both really freak me out. But I'm glad I got to share it with you and hopefully create some <laughs> no, nightmares. No, yeah. I love that. Yeah. And Yeah. Yeah, I'm scared. I hope you're scared because I really am. <laughs> so, in conclusion, 
Both of the tales of Okiku are surrounded by strange and haunting phenomena, and the truths of these stories will forever remain a mystery. So be sure to check us out on the Instagram at the mystery vitals underscore underscore. underscore. And then check out our YouTube channel where we got uh, we all have our audio recordings up and some videos of us, too. Hopefully yes. we'll be back doing that pretty Do soon, too. Soon. Um, and we will see you guys again next week for my case. And uh -huh. I, I think I can confidently say, like, I'll give like this hint at least. Okay. Like, I guess I can confidently say next week we aren't leaving Japan. So. Ooh. We'll I'm be excited. going back to back with something. Well, I'm glad so. I didn't think the same case as you. So. Uh, that's why I was scared when I heard <laughs> that it was the Japanese folklore. I You're went, like, oh, no, 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 no. Well, I'm glad that we um, didn't cross paths. <laughs> yeah, that's but great. we will see you next week for my case. And yes. until then, good Goodbye. night.